East Members the request world. funding for pet projects. That's what an earmark is. And some Republicans have rejected that process as like wasteful and corrupt and that kind of thing. So uh, I wanted to, I wanted to ask a, a follow up question on the issue of earmarks. Uh, Ms. Bobert, you've repeatedly taken credit for projects in Colorado uh, that you asked for funding for, uh, but then you voted against the bill in the end. Bridge over the Roaring Fork River in Glenwood Springs, water treatment plant in Gunnison, I-70 interchange in, in Grand Junction. You're able to vote no and get the praise for voting no because you know that there are enough other Republicans who are willing to vote for those bills so they'll pass. Damn! Wow, is this guy available for the presidential debate or what? But do you want to talk about the theater thing? Uh, sure. So, Kyle, I, I certainly um, have owned out, uh, owned up to uh, my <coughs> night out in Denver. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I've gone on that public ad apology tour and I'm grateful for the mercy and grace that has been shown. But I'm I'm not going to continue to live life in shame and um, be beat up by this. And, you know, I, I would like to go back to we're my legislative gonna, we're actually not record gonna, we're for not just gonna, a second. We're not going to do that. You had plenty of time to answer the question. You chose not sure. to. That's fine. I just want to make sure. And you, and you have Don't apologized. Worry for the theater incident. And I certainly I, have. And I just want to make sure, did you apologize for the behavior that went on with you well, and see, your I date and the vaping? Kyle, or did you, so, so or did Kyle, you apologize, you or pardon me, or did you apologize for lying to voters about what you did that night and the disrespect that you showed to service workers that night? What specifically were you apologizing there, I, I, for? I, I with the abundance of Trump news and subsequent meltdown suffocating the news cycle over the weekend, I wanted to bring something to you that may have snuck under your radar. Self-described ultra-maga conservative Lauren Bolbert participated in a debate recently. And as you've already probably assumed, considering it is Lauren Bobart we're discussing, it went swimmingly. Almost as good as her last debate. Another show of hands here. Um, have you ever been arrested? So I'd like to ask her just a really simple question. And that is, uh, could you like give the definition of carpetbagger to me? You have one minute. But not quite as good as her recent campaign event in front of one, two, three, four, five, six people? Good going, Bobo. Well, during this debate in which she was pressed on her decision to switch districts, as well as other questionable decisions that she's minced her words on, moderator and notable Bobert critic in the past, Kyle Clark, was not willing to let any of it slide. And what emerged was a masterclass on accountability. So Jake Tapple, take notes ahead of the debate at the end of June. Uh, Ms. Bobert, you've repeatedly taken credit for projects in Colorado uh, that you asked for funding for, uh, but then you voted against the bill in the end. Bridge over the Roaring Fork River in Glenwood Springs, water treatment plant in Gunnison, I-70 interchange in, in Grand Junction. You're able to vote no and get the praise for voting no because you know that there are enough other Republicans who are willing to vote for those bills so they'll pass. My question for you is this, and just a short answer, it truly is a yes or no question. If you were the deciding vote, would you still have voted no and killed all of those projects in Colorado that you now take credit for? Yes, and I would have worked through okay. a process. Thank you very much I would have worked through a process to get those over the line, but I worked to get those in, and I have had over 80 initiatives signed into law through the appropriations process. I appreciate process the direct answer. Thank process. you very much. Yes. Do you want to talk about the theater thing? Uh, sure. So, Kyle, I, I certainly um, have owned out, uh, owned up to uh, my night out in Denver. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I've gone on that public ad apology tour and I'm grateful for the mercy and grace that has been shown. But I'm I'm not going to continue to live life in shame and um, be beat up by this. And, you know, I, I would like to go back to we're my legislative gonna, we're actually not record gonna, we're for not just gonna, a second. We're not going to do that. You had plenty of time to answer the question. You chose not sure. to. That's fine. I just want to make sure. I'll have more and, you, time. and you have Don't apologized. Worry for the theater incident. And I certainly I, have. And I just want to make sure, did you apologize for the behavior that went on with you well, and see, your date and the vaping? Kyle, or did you, so, so or did Kyle, you apologize, you or pardon me, or did you apologize for lying to voters about what you did that night and the disrespect that you showed to service workers that night? What specifically were you apologizing there, I, for? I, I don't believe there was disrespect. There were things that were absolutely taken out of context. There's video of your interactions with service workers. I'm just, I'm asking, right. are you well, apologizing it's been, for the it's lying been to voters? It's been reported that I flipped someone off and I did not. So, I mean, I think it's been very mischaracterized. Um, I'm I'm apologizing for you, Kyle Clark, um, getting footage and releasing that um, and, and people seeing this in a very private moment. Certainly. It was very um, important to figure but, out but whether you Kyle, were telling listen, the truth you just had or whether a public agency was lying Denver. about your conduct. You Either just had way, an, was an very interview with CityCast for, for Denver and you were saying how disgusting it is to record talk about someone without in, in their Congress. knowledge. Let's talk and about the use you of did that in very Congress. same thing. In I do not believe me being here is um, making this a vulnerable seat. This is a huge move for conservatives in Colorado.
So just to be clear, uh, Ms. Boebert, you blame Republican voters for the fact that you nearly lost a safe seat and not your own conduct. It, when 50,000 Republican voters do not show up and think that their vote does not matter, that does make an impact on elections. The thing is, this is exactly how you hold a carpetbagger to account, citing her own words and actions that contradict the very policy position she claims to stand by and votes in favour of. To which Clark cited the fact that on numerous occasions she has blissfully posed for pictures next to projects she's voted against. Hell, Biden even went to her district to remind voters that she was in fact against the green energy project that has helped create thousands of new jobs in the wind turbine manufacturing industry. When I took office, I vowed I'd be president for all Americans, whether you live in a blue state or a red state, whether you live in rural or urban areas. And we're, de we're delivering on that promise. But folks, we haven't gotten a whole lot of help from some members of Congress on the other side of the aisle in the United States Congress. The historic investments we're celebrating today is in Congressman Boebert's district. She's one of the leaders of this extreme mega movement. She, along with every single Republican colleague, voted against the law that made these investments and jobs possible. And that's not hyperbole, that's a fact. And then she voted to repeal key parts of this law. And she called this law a massive failure. You all know you're part of a massive failure? Tell that to the 850 Colorados who get new jobs in Pueblo and see us win thanks to this law. Tell that to the local economy that's going to benefit from these investments. Tell that to anyone who wants to listen. Tell with thanks to Congressman, I think she, what she calls a massive failure solar power company that's investing $400 million here in Colorado, creating fit for 56,000 homes, create 250 good paying jobs. Light Source BP is building a new solar farm just down the road from here to power an additional 53,000 homes. Across Colorado, Xcel Energy is investing $1.7 billion to improve the state's electric grid. And folks, None of that sounds like a massive failure to me. How about you? All of which is indicative of who she is as a person and an elected official. The type of person who builds her own pedestal before Congress and preaches about how much of a threat drag queens pose to children while she was indecently touching her date in a public space at a child-friendly performance. To which Clark referenced and again held up to account over her words. But do you want to talk about the theater thing? Uh, sure. So, Kyle, I, I certainly um, have owned out, uh, owned up to uh, my night out in Denver. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I've gone on that public a apology tour and I'm grateful for the mercy and grace that has been shown. But I'm I'm not going to continue to live life in shame and um, be beat up by this. And, you know, I, I would like to go back to we're actually my not legislative gonna, we're actually not record gonna, we're for not just gonna, a second. We're not, gonna, we're not gonna do that. You had plenty of time to answer the question. You chose not sure. to. That's fine. I just want to make sure. I'll have and more you, time. you have Don't apologized worry. for the theater incident. And I certainly I, have. And I just want to make sure. Did you apologize for the behavior that went on with you well, and see, your I date in the vaping? Kyle, or did you, so, so or Kyle, did you apologize, you or pardon me, or did you apologize for lying to voters about what you did that night and the disrespect that you showed to service workers that night? What specifically were you apologizing for? I don't believe there was disrespect. There were things that were absolutely taken out of context. There's video of your interactions with service workers. I'm just, I'm asking, right. are you well, apologizing it's been, for the it's lying been reported to voters? That I flipped or someone off and I did not. So, okay. I mean, I, I think it's it's been very mischaracterized. Um, I'm I'm apologizing for you, Kyle Clark, um, getting footage and releasing that um, and, and people seeing this in a very private moment. Certainly. It was very um, important to figure but, out but whether you Kyle, were telling listen, the truth you just had or whether a public agency was lying Denver. about your conduct. You Either just had way, a, was an interview with City Cast Denver, and you're saying how disgusting it is We're to talk about record someone without their Congress. knowledge. Let's talk and about the use you of did that in very Congress. same thing. How she hasn't really apologized directly for her behavior, but instead has made excuses, many of which were debunked. And as a result, voters are left wondering whether she has any remorse, which we know it's probably as existent as her shame. But lastly, and this is something that I think is important when highlighting how Clark conducted himself in this position, is he didn't just single out Bulbert. He was there as a voice for the people of Colorado's fourth district and had plenty of accountability to go around, grilling candidates on past inflammatory remarks. There are occasions that it seems like you almost take pride in being offensive to people. 
You told a state house colleague who had lost his son in the Aurora theater shooting that he needed to let go of his son's murder. You called a legislator of color buckwheat during a floor debate. You suggested that people with disabilities are like people who took the risk of running with the bulls in Pamplona. And you suggested that Miss Bobert dresses like a prostitute. Do you regret saying any of those things? And why do you talk to people like that? Cal, thank you for the question. Most people know that I'm a straight, uh, no-nonsense conservative. And I say things that oftentimes are misinterpreted or misunderstood. But with respect to one incident, Representative Ortiz, who I was talking to, Eastern Texas country boy, Eastern Colorado country boy, we're friends. We serve as co-chairs in the state house on the Veterans Caucus, brothers in arms. So he was not offended by that comment. Okay, he actually understood me when we had that. But I don't want to talk about that. Let me tell you what I want to talk about. Well, actually, want no, this to, isn't I want free to talk swim. About, I ask a question, you please answer allow me. Please Th allow fine. me to finish. Let me just ask you, the question was, do you regret saying any of those things? And do you, why do you speak to people that way? Do you regret saying that Ms. Bobert, a sitting congresswoman, dresses like a <coughs> prostitute? Actions that they've tried to hide from voters and just an overall lack of professionalism. You resigned your position as House Minority Leader after your drunk driving arrest surfaced this year. And my question is not about what you did while drunk which for anybody who missed it was speeding up I-25 at 90 miles per hour so fast a trooper thought that you were trying to race him. Then you reached for your gun during the traffic stop. You asked the trooper to call the state patrol's lobbyist. Then you asked him to keep the arrest out of the media. My question to you is about what you did while sober. You did not disclose your drunk driving arrest to your Republican colleagues when they were considering you for leader and electing you. No. What does that tell voters about your judgment? Well, thank you, Kyle, for that. I mean, I'm I, I think this is a little bit of you guys being a little sore because you didn't catch this for you know quite some time. This was all pu public knowledge, right? So I didn't disclose, I didn't hide anything from anybody. Um, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, I, I had two seniors in high school at that time, and they didn't need to to go through that publicity. I also was not even elected to that position at that time, so. Um, you know, it, that was a personal decision. It, it, no doubt, I own that. That was a bad mistake. Uh, should not have done it. Was I've it a mistake it. not to tell your colleagues when they were considering you for a leader, knowing that you had something so big and embarrassing in your recent past? Yeah, I, I don't think so. I mean, w w th this happened, you know, uh, at a time that was, you know, this was before even we had theater incidents or anything else that was embarrassing to folks. And so, um, no, uh, you know, serving in public life is hard work and uh, exposing your life to it is, uh, you know, a, a personal decision. And, and I chose not to. It just so happens that Bobart falls into every single category more than once. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.